Okay, wait. Last time I posted a video was back in November. I think we need to rewind a little bit. So in December, we were still in Paris and I made a few homemade gifts for the birthdays and Christmas ahead. And then we went back to Batumi just before New Year's. In January, we harvested the lemons and oranges from Isobebo's garden. The lemons from Western Georgia are absolutely amazing. They are a variety called Mayer lemons, which is a cross between a regular lemon and a mandarin. They are more fragrant and sweeter than regular lemons, and they have this amazing citrusy floral smell that I just love so much. For me, it's the smell of being in Georgia. In February, we started a family band. We rehearsed in the evenings and it was a lot of fun. I also started knitting and made a scarf for my niece using the Baby Pump scarf pattern from sheepandstitch.com, which was a great and super satisfying beginner pattern. I found an old curtain in the house and I used it to sew the Rose Cafe Bustier from Daria Pattern Making. I turned the zip into a lace up back, but I didn't have any underwire or boning when I made it and it just doesn't suit me as is. In March, we went to Gudauri, a ski resort in northern Georgia, where I worked on the seamless mock neck sweater, which is a knitting pattern from Well Love Knits. I loved knitting that sweater throughout the month, using it as a nice mindful break between study sessions to get ready for my final exams in early April. It turned out so well and I just can't wait to wear it this winter. At the end of March, it was my birthday and Lika made this amazing cake with knitting and sewing decorations, which honestly still makes me want to cry whenever I see it now. After my exams went well, I was so relieved and I just spent a lot of time sewing. My favorite project was turning one of Isobebo's old bed sheets into a jumpsuit based on the Sloan pattern from the fabric store. In July, we went to visit my friend Isabella in Italy. She lives in her late grandma's beautiful old village house, and she had turned one of the rooms into a sewing studio for me. I've been thinking for a while about offering a service to give new life to old fabrics and clothes that people are attached to, but not really using much as is. And Isabella offered to be my first client, so she brought along this very special dress for me to transform. Allora, questa qui ehm, era la vestaglia di mia nonna Mansueta e, ed era una delle vestaglie che lei usava ad estate perché questa è una vestaglia estiva mm -hmm. quindi non solo per me è un caro ricordo perché è un ricordo di mia nonna a cui ero molto legata che insomma mi ha cresciuto mm -hmm. però è anche il ricordo di lei in un momento anche molto bello dell'anno perché ehm, durante l'estate proprio lei veniva da, 
giugno a settembre in questa casa dove siamo adesso, quindi passava tutta l'estate in questa casa in cui poi noi nipoti venivamo a trovare i nostri nonni, passavamo l'estate con loro mm-hmm. ed era un po' una parentesi, cioè non so, molto felice delle, delle nostre vite perché qui non si andava a scuola, qui non c'erano i genitori, quindi era tutto un momento molto, uh, sì, di... Cioè, di pura felicità. Mm-hmm. E quindi questo mi ricorda mia nonna in questa casa nel momento dell'anno più bello. Quindi mm-hmm. forse è... In questi momenti. Mm-hmm. Sì, cioè, è proprio... Se devo immaginare l'immagine della felicità, questa cosa la rappresenta del tutto. Mm-hmm. E quindi sì, per, cioè, è un oggetto carico per me di significato, però mi dispiace che... Cioè, che rimanga in un armadio piegato e... Cioè, così non lo indosserei mai perché non, cioè, non mi dona proprio. Mm-hmm. E, e però mi piacerebbe, non lo so, dargli una nuova vita in modo che io possa cioè, portarlo nel mio futuro mm-hmm. e, e usarlo. Cioè, non voglio che rimanga una reliquia che rimane mm-hmm. lì da, come in un mausoleo, voglio mm-hmm. che, insomma, torni, torni a vivere. Qual è un po' il tuo, non lo so, vestito ideale? Magari semplice, però mm-hmm. con un dettaglio particolare mm-hmm. che faccia vedere che cioè, quella cosa ce l'ho solo io. Sì. Mm-hmm. E in particolare, tipo, per questo non vorrei che... Cioè, mi piacerebbe che diventasse un capo d'abbigliamento non fancy. Mm-hmm. Cioè, sì. mi piacerebbe poterlo usare come faceva mia nonna in casa, mm-hmm. magari anche durante una cena in cui sì. invito persone, però... Cioè, non un abito... Per tutti i giorni. Sì. Mm-hmm. Sì. sì. Bellissimo. Uh, forse se ti va facciamo che lo indossi adesso com'è mm-hmm, sì. per vedere un po' After studying the dress and thinking about a few options, I decided to turn it into a slip dress that she can easily slip on and wear around the house all day in the summer. The buttons were a defining element of the dress to me, so I decided to keep them, but move them to the side. I also kept the pockets that Isabella loved, but I decided to sew them on with a slight slant for a more dynamic silhouette and for easy access. She told me she loved the scooped back, so I cut it quite low, and she mentioned she would love to have a belt to tie at the waist. This gave me the idea to make extra long straps that can be worn straight or crossed before being threaded through two little loops and tied either at the back or all the way to the front like a belt. and beautiful to be working on her grandma's dress in her grandma's house, which is so full of many childhood memories for Isabella. In August, my parents came to visit us in Georgia and we made them join the family band. In September, Isabella came to Georgia for the first time, so we showed her Tbilisi, took her to the mountains in Razbegi and Juta, and then to Batumi. Isobebo showed Isabella her garden, making her pick cucumbers, kumquats, grapes, and so many other things. It's so sweet! Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, so sweet. These, these were my, my grandma's favorite. Chinuri pomidori sche. Chinese tomato. Kelan chamomita no Maldive vita in Tesli. My dad brought it back from the Maldives. The seeds. The leg of sarte. That has Kurzelia Gemriel Gassinget. We tried the grapes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mark Kurzelia Ginda. Essa per avia. Tu? Romeli Kurzelia. Essa alla gastoria. When we do the bit kitrina chesada. Oh, 
we also ate a few almonds fresh from the tree, which were so delicious. Then Isobebo taught us how to make Armenian kada, which is this delicious rolled pastry biscuit with a walnut paste filling. There are many types of kada in Armenia, but this is the version you'll find most often in Georgia. I filmed the whole process and you'll find the full recipe in the description. Margarini ora sormus Marili. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It already got a little bit bigger, oh. she said. That's the way it should be then. <laughs> 